we are blessed to have Fiona Motala, uh, who is a dear friend of mine and who has done several cooking shows. I'll call them shows because it looks like <laughs> So the production is great. Um, and she is going to, a little bit about Fiona. She is a proud South African living in the United States for 24 years. She's a mom of three, has a daughter who's 21 and two boys, 16 and 13. She's also a debate coach and a caterer. And she owns her own Lekker by Fiona, uh, which is a South African fusion cooking brand. Um, and she is also uh, joined here today with her friend Miley, who's helping her with the videography and making sure you get to see Fiona as well as see her cooking space. So welcome, Fiona. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zainab. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm Fiona from Lekka by Fiona, and I'm so happy to be cooking with you today. We're going to be making two recipes. We're going to start off making a quick and easy date and nut bread that will be served with labne and dukkha. And then I'm going to teach you how to make talbina, which is a prophetic porridge that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to eat. And um, we're going to start off with the bread. So Bismillah, let's go. So I'm going to move over here to, can everybody see my bowl? Over here? Okay. Let's start. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So in this bowl, we're going to add three cups of flour. What kind of flour is it, uh, Fiona? It's all This is all-purpose flour, Zainab. Okay. I'm going to add some all-purpose flour. So I'm going to add the dry ingredients first. And this is a really quick and easy recipe. Like, you don't have to bloom the yeast. It's like when you don't have anything for iftar or you're rushing, you've just come home and you want to give your family something substantial to eat, packed with, full, filled with nutrients, um, something that they can just dip into like, um, you know, hummus or labne or whatever. And it has dates in it. So it's really quick and easy. Um, so let, let, let me add all the dry ingredients and then I'll continue talking. So we've got three cups of flour. I'm going to add a tape, a one and a tea, quarter teaspoon of, of um, yeast. I'm going to add a pinch of cardamom. I'm going to add one teaspoon of brown sugar. Raw brown sugar. I'm going to add 100 and 20. I'm going to give this a, just a quick whisk so we can get some air into this. Going to add 120 moles of olive oil and a cup of milk. And that's it. We're going to stir it all up and make it into a soft dough. Let me get my spatula. And we will share these ingredients in writing. So, yes. all of you, don't worry about that piece. Just oh, enjoy right. the. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yes, we're definitely going to put a recipe uh, card together for everyone. So we're just going to make sure that the dough comes together nicely. <clears throat> I'm going to add my hands to this real quick. As soon as everything is kind of mixed in. And then I'm going to knead it real quick. We just want the dough to come together. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've got a frog in my throat because I'm so excited. <clears throat> so we're going to just need this to just let the dough come together. We don't have to knead it for a long time. I just want it to come together. Then we're going to pause the recording, right? Okay. Yes. yes, inshallah, there's going to be a recording as well. Okay, this is perfect. It doesn't, you don't really need to knead it much because when it's done rising for like until it's doubled in size, you can knead it before rolling it out. And I'm, basically, it's just, you just wanted the dough to come together. It's not too soft and it's not very stiff either. It's just, a great texture and consistency. You made that look and so... Now we're gonna... 
Yeah. And that it didn't even take us like two minutes yeah. to just throw all the ingredients in and put this dough wow. together. And we're just going to leave it for at least 20 minutes so until it doubles in size to rise. So I have mm -hmm. one that I've already made earlier. So now we can. And I'm going to let this one proof over here. So this is the dough. It's ready. It's soft. I'm just going to sprinkle my surface. Some flour. Put that there. Okay, so now it's still a bit shaggy, so I'm just going to knead it a little bit. Make it come together. So I'm actually going to divide this into two, and we're just going to make half and set this one aside. Okay, this is it. So we can get two, uh, like uh, almost pizza size, like small pizza size um, breads out of one batch of dough. So I'm going to roll it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's quick and easy. Um, there's beauty in the imperfection. That's what I always tell my kids too. There's beauty in the imperfection. Food is not supposed to be like perfectly shaped and, you know, it's supposed to look enjoyable, look tasty and bread. I mean, you can't go wrong with bread. So the thickness, you want it to, you want to leave a little bit of thickness because it is a bread. It's not a pizza. So you want to leave a little bit of thickness because it is also going to rise once you bake it. I'm going to grab my tray, my baking tray, and I'm going to place this on the baking tray. And I'm just going to prepare the other one. Place it on the have tray. Have you oil and put flour on your baking tray? I have. Yes, very good question, Auntie Shaila. Thank you so much. So I've prepared my baking tray um, with a nonstick uh, foil. I protect my trays by foiling them. Um, before baking them because it's so much easier when you do the wash up too right, and, right. Um, so I yes I, pre I prepared my tray with a non-stick um, foil and I, I just as an extra precaution for today's show I sprayed it to ensure that it doesn't stick okay, so really is everybody um so like you can see it doesn't have to be perfect I mean if you wanted to pat it out you could it's this is the thickness of the bread so it's not too thin it's not too thick and I'm going to put this on my tray and I'm going to set that aside so we can prepare the egg wash. So for the egg wash, we're going to need one egg. We're going to need two tablespoons of evaporated milk. I'm going to add one teaspoon of brown sugar. And some cardamom powder. And we're going to give it a quick whisk. So that all the ingredients come together. And this is what's going to add that um, softness and flavor to the bread. Because it has cardamom and evaporated milk and egg and sugar, a little bit of sweetness too. Okay, it's giving us a good whisk. I'm just gonna set this aside and we're gonna prepare our date and nut mixture. So I've pre-chopped 20 dates and I've fitted them. And to this bowl, I've added pistachios, chopped pecans, sesame seeds. I added some more cardamom and we're gonna add the dates into this. We're gonna give it a quick toss. And this is a very forgiving recipe. You can add whatever you want. You could put kalunji seeds in here. You could put cranberries, raisins. If you don't like pistachios and, and pecans, you could put almonds. You could put Brazil nuts. Whatever you want. It's your family's favorite nut mixture. You can add whatever seeds you want and dates. Whichever date of your choice. These are the dates that you get from Medina. I think they, the Medina dates. So I am using those today. And basically, you're just going to prepare the steak mixture and set it aside. So 
Now I'm going to bring the bread over here. Can everybody see my tray? Mm -hmm. And I'm just yes. going to use my fingers and I'm going to poke little, make little indentations into the bread with my fingers like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the egg wash to kind of absorb into the bread. Because the egg wash is not just a simple egg wash. Remember, it has all the good stuff, the evaporated milk, the cardamom, and the sugar to bring in all those flavors for this egg bread. Now I'm going to egg wash it. And I want to really cover the bread with the egg wash. Get it in every corner all around. Well, circles don't have corners, but <laughs> spread it all around evenly. And as you can see, I'm putting quite a bit. I'm not, I'm not skimming on my egg wash because I want it to have all that good stuff go into the bread when it's baking. Okay. Almost ready. And one tip that I forgot to mention when we began is remember to preheat your oven to 400 degrees before baking, which I have okay. done, but I for forgot to mention that right when we started. Okay. And now we're going to take our date and that mixture. You can press them and you can put as many or as much or as little as you want. It's a very easy, forgiving bread. It's almost ready to pop in the oven. And then you're going to sprinkle the nuts on there. <clears throat> and nuts, dates, Seeds, these are all prophetic foods, packed with nutrients, great for Ramadan, great when breaking fast to refuel your body, and delicious. And there you have it. We're going to pop this in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. I'm going to set the timer. Right. Wash up my hands. Can you tell us about your plate that says Bismillah? Yes, I can. So actually my friend Miley is actually with me here right now. And she has a company called Milk and Dates. She's off screen. Um because she's assisting me with the with the whole lighting and the production of this video. But she has a company called Milk and Dates and she makes these boards. And it's, yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. One of my favorite boards. <laughs> is it a Lazy Susan? It is a Lazy Susan, yes. And we chose to use it today for the aesthetic because it says Bismillah and it was just perfect. <laughs> Excuse me, I better mute myself. Now we're going to move over here and... We're going to start making the Dalbina. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but basically, according to Bukhari, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Dalbina soothes, soothes the grieving heart and cleanses the ailing heart, just as one would clean water off of your dirty face. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to eat Dalbina. And for those of you that don't know what Dalbina is, it's a porridge, it's a womb porridge, and it's made from barley flour. I don't know if you can see this, barley flour. It's ground barley. And it's very simple, very quick and easy to make. Um, I make it for my family during the month of Ramadan. It's been great to have it the whole time, or even when you're breaking the fast, because it's warm. Um, and you can make it. Uh, you the, the nice thing about this recipe is that it's very simple. And you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want by adding um, different things to it. So today we're going to start off with a little bit of ghee, our saucepan. 
I'm just going to put like a heaped teaspoon of ghee in here. And I'm going to turn it on. Just to like a medium heat. <clears throat> and I'm going to let this start to um, start to melt. And to the ghee, I'm going to add four tablespoons of the ground bar barley flour. Can we use olive oil instead of ghee? Yes, you can. So that's the really, that's, that's a great question. See, that's like, that's the beauty of this recipe. You can make it the way you want. You could use coconut oil and that would mm -hmm. change the full flavor palette. You could mm -hmm. use, you know, sesame oil, avocado oil. You could use, um, you know, a combination of butter and olive oil. Um, I chose to use ghee because um, clarified butter is also, studies have shown that it's really healthy for you. Um, so, and I love the, the nutty flavor that mm -hmm. ghee has. So I, I, and I like ghee also because when you incorporate it with the, with the flour, I can show you in this, uh, I'll show you off screen in a minute. Um, basically, I'm just kind of like lightly braising the bar barley flour. You don't have to braise it for too long. I'm just incorporating it into the, into the ghee. And now I'm, to this, I'm going to add one and a half cups of water. Slowly. And you're going to keep mixing it so that you don't get any lumps. Fiona, is the barley flour easily available at all yes. grocery stores? So you can, um, I actually purchased a bag. You can find it at Sprouts. You can get it um, online from Amazon. Uh, most health stores and even your grocery store, your Asian grocery stores and Middle East and Mediterranean stores would carry it. Good to know. Yeah. So I'm just going to stir it so that it kind of like comes together and I remove all the lumps and then I'm going to turn it up on high because I want it to get a good rolling boil <clears throat> and hopefully inshallah it starts to thicken. I'm also going to add some milk to this, one cup of milk. Is that two cups of milk or one? It's one. Oh. It's one cup. So I'm just adding the rest of the barley flour that I had in the bowl to this that I had set some aside. It's a one cup measure. Oh, okay. It looks like a larger one. Yeah. <laughs> the water was in a two cup measure. And then we're just going to wait for this to get to rolling boil. I'm going to give it a quick whisk. And basically, you just want to make sure that there's no lumps in the porridge. Um, it's very similar um, to cooking um, a semolina porridge or... Um, halwa. What halwa? halwa is yes, halwa? like soji. Like soji. soji I'm, yes, I'm, with semolina. Yes, I'm... I'm Gujarati, so I would say soji. I think it's semolina soji, powder. Yes, we say soji too. Yes, yes. So basically, but you fry just it want more. It cook it more in, in the in yes. Heat. So soji has a little bit of a raw flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel so that's why you would like you would braise your soji until it's like brown or just like so that you know it gets that like a raw flavor out of it. But Bali doesn't have that flavoring. You don't need to really braise it, but you can if you want to. I mean, you can brown mm. it if you want. Like I said, this recipe is very easy and very forgiving. Um, and you can make it as complicated or as simple yeah. as you want. So it's actually starting to get thick and it, the lumps have all been removed. Um, I'll take it over and show you in a minute. I just wanted to get to a good rolling boil and get thicker as we go. Does anyone have any questions for me while we're waiting for the porridge to kind of get hot? No questions? 
<laughs> they so don't have any don't need it. Make big patches of this and then store it. Can we do that? Or is it better fresh? I've, I've never tried that, but I mean, I know people freed um, oatmeal. So, I mean, it's, not I've never tried that. that. Like even in the next day or two, like make it for the week. Oh yeah, like oh yeah, you can mm-hmm. absolutely. I think it would be good for three, four days. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Does it get yeah. very thick sitting in the fridge though? Um, it will thicken. Okay. Over, like you know, as it cools, but it's uh, it 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 will thin down as soon as you reheat it again. You could just add a little bit of liquid to it, and it'll totally thin down. Mm-hmm. So this is getting thicker, and I'm going to stop whisking it because it's actually a perfect consistency there's no love from there i'm gonna add some cardamom powder because i love cardamom powder i feel like it brings out the flavor Mm -hmm. of the porridge and the barley and that was not a measurement that was just me throwing in as Mm -hmm. much as i wanted (laughs) because i personally love cardamom you don't have to add it you know Um, but i love it Um, and the porridge is actually thickening up so beautifully i i want to I, can you? I'm not sure if you can see this, but but it's perfect. Fiona, do you yes. make your own ghee from butter? Um, I do actually make my own ghee. This one is store bought, but I do make oh. my own ghee. Ghee, oh. I do. Yes, I prefer to make my own ghee. It's much more feasible. And right. it's just, you know, you can control how nutty you want it to, like if you want it browner or lighter. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, usually I do make my own ghee. Actually, this is perfect. The, the porridge is the perfect consistency. I'm going to just step away from the stove and bring it to the screen so you can see the consistency. And it smells so good. And like I said, yeah, no. this is perfect for iftar. Yes. Um, this is. I'm assuming this is a sweet recipe. Do you make a savory recipe for? I have never tried. I've never used barley flour, um, uh-huh. on its own. Say, say, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I have. I sometimes add my barley flour to my alim. To what alim? Uh, to alim, yeah. South African alim um, is a little bit different. Um, it's a, it's a lot more thinner, the consistency. And we make alim with oats and barley. And so a lot of times I put barley in to thicken my alim. But I also put the whole pulled barley because I like the texture and the feel of the barley and, you know, in the alim and in my mouth. But I've used barley flour to thicken my alim. And you, absolutely, you can use it in savory dishes. Um, oh, thanks. Absolutely, because you can use it to thicken your, your whatever it is for a broth. If you want to thicken a broth or, or a sauce, you could totally use it for all of those um, reasons. Absolutely. I think that would be great. So at this point, you can sweeten it if you want to. You can use sugar. You can use brown salt, uh, brown sugar, monk food sweetener. Today, we're going to use agave. And I'm going to add the agave in at this point um, and just give it a quick stir. You could use honey. Um to tie it in with the prophetic benefits and the prophetic foods theme that we have today. Um, But I'm just going to add a little bit of agave to this. And then obviously you would sweeten to taste. And we're not going to be tasting it today because alhamdulillah we're fasting. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just added enough sweetener that I think would be suitable. And this is ready to plate. So I'm going to move my plate over to the other table. So that everyone can see my screen. And today's toppings are just very sweet toppings. But healthy toppings too. Mm. Okay. And so something that you can also do, which is a really fun idea, um, is you can make, um, I'm sure all of you have heard of acai bowls that all our kids love to eat. And they have like the acai or the breakfast bowls and they have like all the variety like we have here of the toppings. So you could set up like a Tildina station for breakfast. 
and add all the toppings for your family. I could have <clears throat> maybe cooked this a little bit longer and got it thicker if you want. But this is also a perfect consistency. It's very warming. When you eat it, you feel like a warm blanket wrapping over you. Mm -hmm. Set this back onto the stove. And so now I have here the same nut mixture, but without the dates from the bread that I used. So I'm going to put this onto, mm. into my, onto my tobina. Can you repeat again what it was uh, in that mixture? So that it's pistachios, sesame seeds, pecan, a little bit of cardamom. So it's basically chopped nuts and some cardamom. And you could even add dates if you wanted. Were they, the nuts were in equal quantities or what was the proportion? Uh, the nuts were in equal quantities, yes. Okay. But you can add and put as many, like, you know, vary the quantity based on your preference. <laughs> this so, is coconut? This is shredded coconut. You can use sweetened or unsweetened, whatever you prefer. I mean, you don't have to put coconut. Today, we're just, you know, I'm showing you that you can make this with a variety of options. And now I'm using chocolate chips. So obviously, chocolate chips... <laughs> is not everybody's come might not but you can also use dark chocolate you can make it fancy with lint chocolate if you wanted you could put lint squares you can bougie up your bowls as you choose ladies bougie <laughs> up your bowls make it as like i said make it as simple or as complicated as you want if you want to be real la bougie you could add some chia seeds and hemp seeds to your bowl you know, all that you could put some goji berries in there. My mom doesn't call them goji berries. She's so cute. She calls them Gucci berries. I'm like, okay, mom, Gucci berries work. And there you go, ladies, a bowl of Felbina, ready to go, ready to eat. And that's up. So fancy, yes. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have six. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Please, if you try this, you have to tag Olive and me on Instagram and show Absolutely. us pictures of your bougie, Absolutely. your bougie Tilbina bowls. Okay, that's bougie, what you want yes. to see. That's yeah, the right. bougie Tilbina bowls. Right. Oh. And a fun fact <laughs> about Fiona is that she recently did this for a major Suhoor um, or a Qiyam event. She cooked this for 200 plus people. So Ooh. you can imagine <laughs> the date and that bread and this. So it's a great, I agree with you, Fiona. It's great for support. It's great for breakfast. And I love that idea of doing it like a, uh, what you said, like a. Like yeah, set it up as a, like a bar, yeah, like a breakfast yeah, like bar. A bar. Yeah, like yeah. putting the top in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What a great way. Um, And Thank then, you. yes, there will be a recording for those of you who join late. Oh, of course, of course. Um, and then uh, the date and nut bread, all the recipes, everything will be shared. Um, uh, if you are on our Olive WhatsApp, you will get it. Um, we will be sharing this on our Olive YouTube page uh, uh, shortly in a few, in a week or a few days. Uh, and we will make sure we mention the recipe in the, um, the details of the video. But do you guys have any questions? So we have a few more minutes, um, yeah. four more minutes to be exact, before we the bread comes out. Before the bread comes out of the, of the oven, so I'm going to show you a really simple and easy way to serve your bread for your family. So I have some labne, and I am going to make a quick labne and bread spread. It's all about so presentation. Gonna, <laughs> absolutely. I'm all about, oops, then that was an epic splash of the libne <laughs> all over my cup. I'm so sorry. So I have a, a pre-mixed some, some seasonings into my libne, um, because I like to keep it flavorful and in the container. So I always add, and I'll show you in a minute, my secret spice, which I've used in an olive video, in my previous olive video, if any of you have watched it before when I made the dates 
the stuffed dates. This is mm. my secret, secret uh, uh, seasoning and spice. I don't call it secret. It's available in stores um, and you can get it. But I like it. I call it my fairy dust, really, um, because I love to sprinkle it on my labne, on my breads. Um, over my salad, sometimes over my soups. It's one of my favorite um, savory seasonings. And it's the dukkha. I don't know if you all can see this from Trader Joe's. It's a nut and spice blend. And it's one of my favorites. So we're just going to sprinkle some of this onto the labneh. And I'm going to drizzle this with some olive oil. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I feel very Palestinian dish now you are making. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Absolutely. <laughs> Dukkha is a combination. Yes, absolutely. And actually, now that you since I've loved the zatar, yeah. I do actually have some fresh um, Palestinian zatar in my fridge from Ramallah, that a very close friend of mine, I'm sure you guys all know her, Masha Allah. Allah. Lucky you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Lucky God from you. me, back yeah. from Ramallah. So this is the zatar, and it smells so good. And zatar and dukkha together on this labneh looks amazing. And this is a very it's simple good. day, like a simple spread. You, Like I said, ladies, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. You could bougie this up. You can put some <laughs> pomegranate seeds on there, put some dates, throw it on there, make it look good. <laughs> and our bread is almost ready. It says two minutes to the timer. So I'm going to set this aside for a second and keep it ready for our bread. Put this here. The bread is about to come out. I have a question. You may, a question. Yes. You mentioned yes. hemp seeds. Can we eat yes. hemp seeds? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The seed, the hemp seed, is not intoxicating. No. No. And there's numerous studies that show uh, the benefits of hemp seeds. I I hear about it a lot, and I read about it a lot, but I wasn't sure that if we can consume it or no. As like a haram, yes. uh, haram and haram. No, yes, absolutely. I mean, I would advise yeah. you to check with your scholar first, but okay. as far as I know, yes, you can. Ah, okay, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So we have just a few seconds for the bread to be ready. It's almost there. I just wanted to get a nice brown coloring. Oh. So okay. uh, Fiona made both these recipes for that kiam and she also had a chicken wrap made too so <laughs> she had an army of volunteers wrapping up her chicken and all the good stuff so we were blessed to have her um host the suhoor oh that looks great and so this is the bread that's just come out of the oven you can leave it in a little bit longer if you want the, the edges to be more brown. But this was 20 minutes at 400 degrees. I'm just going to put it on the rack. Actually, no, I'm not going to do this. Doesn't that look good, you guys? And so now I think I misplaced my. Sorry, one second, ladies. I'm taking the cutter. Got it. <laughs> okay, let's cut this. It's nice and hot. So I'm just going to use my glove. Do we have and to let it rest, hot. though, uh, Fiona? Usually? You can if you want to. You can, but okay. it doesn't matter uh -huh. um, because it's piping hot bread, right? Okay. Steaming from the oven. I mean, you can't get better than that, ladies. Imagine if you right. prepare this just in time for it's dark and you pop it out mm -hmm. of the oven and you cut it up for your family. I'm sure they're going to love it. In fact, I have no doubt that they're going to love it. I'm going to grab the other one.
and we have enough time to go grab these groceries <laughs> and make it yes. for us. <laughs> Who knows? This, I'm just going to slice up the other one. We're going to do the plating. And um, I'll show you guys what it looks like. The lebni really combine, uh, goes really well with this bread, for sure. I think I really enjoyed it with the lebni. That was a great idea. You, you, you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I, mean, you I could think do that it was a great combo. Kind of, I mean, you could even have it with like cream cheese and honey. Um, mm -hmm. You know, any kind, whatever your favorite um, spread is, you could, it's a sweet bread. And ladies, honestly, the egg wash with the evaporated milk and the cardamom is what gives this bread the kick that it, that, um, that sets it apart from other breads. Because I know we all make something similar, but really the egg wash with the evaporated milk is the secret to this recipe. I'm just going to wipe this up. I like your cutting board. <laughs> Thank you so much. The cutting board, like I said, is by my friend Miley. And Zainab, I will send you her details. And you can tag her in the video and the picture that we take after. Mm -hmm. So that you can share it with all your Olivers. Because she custom makes boards. She makes oh, all no. kinds of boards for the home and for welcome boards and all kinds of stuff. No. So, I can take no. Absolutely. Yes. And there we go, ladies. This yes. is our spread for today. Wow. <laughs> How delicious <laughs> <does> that <laughs> Alhamdulillah. See, and please want... do try this for your family. I mean, we literally made this together right now. And it didn't even take us that long. Like the batch of bread that we made, it's on the stove and it's ready to go. So, I mean, I, if I wanted to, I could make the second batch right now. So it doesn't take long. It's super easy. It's packed with all the delicious goodness, sunnah foods. We've got dates in there. We've got barley flour. We've got sesame seeds. We've got all the good stuff. You can put kalunji seeds over your bread. You could put um, fennel seeds. You could make it any way that you want. Like I said, bougie it up as much <laughs> as you like. And I hope you no. do make it for your families and share it with us. So I know that you've done it and you enjoyed it. Fiona, would you say this bread could be, uh, can we freeze this bread? Yes, absolutely. Right? I mean, yeah, I think you can. Absolutely, you can. Wow. How that really looks delicious. delicious. <laughs> so can, can, you, can you tell us about the recipe? Where can we find it? I just like, you know, enter the plate. The yes, recipe I'm going to type it up for you yes. right now. Yes, yes. We, we'll share the recipe, Amal, the video, Great. everything. Yeah, Great. of course, of course, as always, as always. And Fiona, it's such a pleasure. We love how you explain things to us, mm -hmm. too. It really explains the science behind, you know, you do what you do. Um, another cool thing I love, uh, Fiona, that you do, if you want to share, is you make your own rose syrup, too, right? Yes, I do. I do. I make that. Actually, I learned that trick from my mother-in-law. Um, Amina yeah. Mutala, she's the one that taught me how to make rose syrup. And actually, my mother-in-law makes a huge pot, you guys, of rose syrup every Ramadan and shares it with her friends. So I learned how to make um, rose syrup from her. So yes, we can do That's... that one day. We can make a big batch of rose syrup. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it? Uh, it's like a rose syrup. It's a pink rose syrup. Um, it's very similar to Ru Afsa. But it's more natural and actually it's more natural. way tastier. Yeah, and way tastier. Natural. Yeah, it's natural. That's the the key part. That it's not processed. Um, yes. So, uh, anyone have any questions? I, I have a question. Can I ask? Sure. sure. Of course. The, the labna you said it, is it just plain yogurt or is it different from the yogurt that we use? No, know? it's different from the yogurt. Actually, the one that I'm using today is the Turkish labna. Mm -hmm. I I mean, you get different types of love me. Um, and all, I love all of them. But this one is one of my favorite ones. This particular oh, brand. Uh, the Turkish I, I love can, me is... Uh, I can has, add... It, sorry? 
How uh, okay, Turkish? If I can Lebne. add. Lebne oh, oh, oh. is made of Lebanon of yogurt. Yes. It's yogurt, yes, but, but the it, it's is... strained. It is strained. Oh, yeah. You put okay, it like a cheese cloth, the, so it's like made of yogurt. yogurt. It's like the Greek yes. yogurt. Yeah, it's, made, it's made from yogurt and then you strain the yogurt in a cheese cup yes. like he's saying it's yes. overnight and yogurt, then you but use... not the same it's similar but yes. not the same yes i'm sure it's there the must curds be of the yogurt added to it because we also hung the curd but that it, it becomes you know it doesn't have any taste in it it's just you know plain yogurt but no. uh, okay we uh, where if you want to use use, <laughs> use use uh the yogurt that you buy from like fresh choice or any arabic stores not the greek yogurt it's different yeah. the greek yogurt is different from yes, the that is different arabic yes. yogurt so if you want to use yes. the arabic yogurt if we can say this it's it's going to be the labne that you're like you know testing in other like uh, labne so use the if we can say arabic yogurt i use the arabic yogurt actually i do my own yogurt and my own labne so the yes. Greek yogurt will not give you the same taste, Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. It won't because it has a tart. The Greek yogurt has a tart flavor, and you don't want to have that tartness yeah. in your in your Correct. labneh. Correct. Yes. The Greek yogurt doesn't have and any actually, labneh is it's very easy blend. to make. We can share the recipe with you if you want. Where it's very do easy I buy the ready-made labneh? labneh? From any Arab Middle Mediterranean Fresh Middle choice, store. King, Super yeah. King. Uh, you get very diff all different types Atayibat. of varieties. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, very good. Very interesting. You're welcome. So this right. is, these are the these are, this is the dukkha that I know people are uh, asking about. What is it? Yes. The dukkha. dukkha. This is so. This dukkha is different uh. from. So if, in the Middle East, in the Levant area, you get different types of dukkha, and every region has a different. Some people add more thyme, more rice. It's very similar to zathar. Dukkha is more nutty. Like if you go to Medina, you'll have a different, they have a Medani Dukkha, it tastes different. Um, but I personally love this one, even though it's Trader Joe's, um, just the way that they have the combination of the seeds and the nuts and the seasoning, it tastes really good, you guys. You've got to try it. Okay. Did you try Dukkha from Ramallah? <laughs> yes, I did. And, I've, and I actually... Um, and my, I have a, a, my own batch of Medani uh, Dukkha that I always bring from Medina. If you've ever had Ramadan in Medina, they Come serve you home. yogurt with bread and they give you a little pouch of Dukkha and you add it to your yogurt when you're eating it. And it's just, it's much more finer. It's a fine powder. Um, and I think it's made with black salt um, and a bunch of other like seasonings. And it just has a really unique flavor um, that I've never tasted in any other Dukkha. But this this one is my my one of my faves mm -hmm. well fiona yeah. you have a lot of assignments coming your way we need the written recipe for both and love okay. and okay. Uh, apparently a recipe for corn lagan sure my mother-in-law's corn lagan <laughs> <laughs> i'll have how about we do a cooking class for that and i'll invite my mother-in-law well, on yes, and she can make it for do, you we would love that Right. Okay, well done. I think that's a great idea. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, be like a thank you so much. Show. All right. Yes, we could totally do that. Any last minute questions before I end today's session? We get to end. I mean, Fiona, you finished in less than forty minutes. That's mm -hmm. that's so amazing. that's what Maybe I wanted. Yeah, I scratch. wanted to share it with you. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to show you how easy it is to make delicious, hearty, wholesome. You know, nutritious. Food for iftar or suhoor for your family in a in a very short period of time. So we Fiona, don't have to enter the kitchen from uh, one uh, p.m. <laughs> you don't. You really don't. I always for just seven hours. Like, yeah, you really don't, ladies. Please don't do that. Please don't waste your time in the kitchen. We all love good food, but it's the month of Ramadan. Spend that time, you know, focusing on your ibadah and doing your good deeds and your prayers. And even though, yes, cooking is also a form of ibadah and a way to, you know, earn reward when you feed your family and you feed a fasting person, but we don't want to spend hours in the kitchen cooking. We don't want to be tired. We don't want to be exhausted and frustrated. We want it to be an enjoyable process. We want it to look presentable, be beautiful for both us <laughs> to enjoy and for our families to enjoy. All of Community Services is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Southern California that provides culturally appropriate services to seniors, their family, and the community. 
Through its physical and virtual interactive programs, OLIVE engages participants in a variety of ways that promotes health and well-being. To learn more about OLIVE Community Services, to get involved, or to make a donation, please visit www.olivecs.org or email info at olivecs.org. Be a change maker and together, let's live, learn, and thrive.